Alright, okay, ayan. So, hello, dears. <laughs> hello again. Okay, and welcome to our class in parasitology and um, another pre-recorded lecture and laboratory activity in our class. And for this uh, lecture, we are going to focus now on the next activity after your micrometry, and that is hay infusion. Okay, alright. So, uh, for this activity, um, again, so this is the manner that I <laughs> recorded my lecture, but I will divide the lecture into two parts, so two pre-recorded lecture, hopefully. The first part is the... Uh, activity proper, no? And then the second half is uh, the discussion on the medically important protozoa. So I um, discussed uh, or I included some medically important protozoa here um, in our presentation. And on that lecture, I'm going to revert or I'm going to go back to our my old style of lecturing or pre-recorded lecture, which is through a uh, pro projector and all that. All right. But the, for the first part, I'll just um, record this way para again makita you'll see the pictures okay that I put in here uh, compared to if I project it diba so baka hindi maklaro and it's mga GIF siya so it's moving alright ayan so again this is hay and fusion okay alright Ayan. So, uh, before again, we continue some intro introduction. So, your hay infusion, or we are performing this in the laboratory, it's because we are going now to focus, no? Or we are looking at the protozoa, okay? Your single cell parasites, no? Single cell, again, unicellular eukaryotic organisms, most of which are microscopic. So, when I say unicellular uh, eukaryotic, no, they are single cell, the one cell, but they have true organelles, diba? You have eukaryotes, diba? I hope you um, already know the difference between the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes, no? Um, for protozoa, they are eukaryotes, no? So, they have a true nucleus, they have all the organelles that are um, membrane-bound, no? They have cell membranes and all that, uh, but they are, they are only one cell, okay? So, unicellular, all right? And most of them are microscopic. Aside from that, as mentioned, they have specialized organelles that are responsible for life functions. So, uh, for their survival, no, for division and all that. Most of them, they multiply by binary fission. So, by, by the name itself, binary fission, they divide by themselves no, into two, all right? So, they don't usually go into sexual uh, reproduction like there's a male and female, <laughs> like normal um, other cells, like other cells. Uh, but for uh, protozoa, they have just they divide by themselves into two binary fission that's the point of binary fission and uh for humans no or for infections caused by protozoa again uh they are divided into four groups again uh, i have discussed this or have introduced this in our first lecture which is the introduction to parasitology no again this is just um a uh, uh, rough parang rough summary of the protozoan infections but again this is not divided into mga phylo mga ganern right so again the four major groups that can cause infection to humans of protozoa are first your amoebae no, or amoebae you have the flagellates uh, the ciliates or the ciliate and lastly the sporozoans all right okay and true enough uh, this is the um categorization no of our uh you know the, from phylum to uh, from kingdom to phylum of our infections that uh, of protozoan origin that can affect to man. Okay, so you have the protozoa and then the sarcomas, tigophora, ciliophora, apicomplex, and all that. Again, we'll discuss further. Uh, we'll discuss this further when we go now to the medically important protozoa uh, on the second half of the lecture. Okay, all right. Now we go now to the hay infusion proper, like the the activity itself so what what is it no it's perhaps the most well-known culturing technique so when you say culturing technique when you say culture it's the artificial growing no artificial growing of microorganisms in vitro so when you say in vitro outside of their habitat natural habitat so in this case we are growing protozoa no or we are going unicellular organisms outside of their natural habitat let's say um, pond water no rain water we are culturing them when they say culturing again artificially growing them in the laboratory okay so again it's perhaps the most well-known culturing technique because aside as um, we aside as 
you know, we perform this in our class in parasitology. This activity is also performed in other subjects like biology, microbiology, and all that. Okay, because again, it's really versatile. No, it can uh, because again, we want to look at different types of protozoa. All right. Okay. And the main procedure is that there is you boil water and then you put hay or here in the Philippines by the mga grass like carabao grass, kogon grass, no. And uh, this grass no serves as the medium, medium or source of food for the growth of bacteria. And once bacteria has fully grown or there's a lot of bacteria na, then the protozoans will thrive because the bacteria now is the source of food no for the protozoans all right so boiling no essentially it breaks down the hay and the grass so that the sugar from the hay and grass will be released and again so that the bacteria can feed on the sugar from the hay and again once if there's already bacteria then the protozoans will follow because again uh, the bacteria will now serve as the food of protozoans. Okay, all right. Ayan. So again, this is an example of a hay solution. So these are the the grass, no, and this is the water, pond water or rain water that we add to the solution to the boiled solution of hay, so that again uh, we can propagate or we can uh, yeah, propagate the growth of the protozoans found in the rainwater or pond water. And in our case, canal water. <laughs> okay, canal water. Ayan. Okay, so for the procedure, very straightforward, very easy to perform. You boil one glass of water, may be distilled, pwedeng tap water, and then you add the hay or carabo grass, kogon grass, and let it simmer for three minutes. Uh, we transfer the preparation into a clean bottle. Any bottle will do. Uh, usually, mga mayonnaise bottles, you have... Uh, Mga sandwich spread and all that uh, any bottle will do and then we also include some of the hay or the grass no as, as again source of food for the protozoans and we then add about two to three tablespoons of the canal water so we are expecting that the protozoans are there in the canal water and then we add now to the boiled solution of hay no uh, so that they can grow there that it's that that is their culture medium or their habitat no where they can feed and propagate all right, and then we let it stand half closed so that there will still be oxygen um, at room temperature for two to three days. And then after two to three days, we then use a dropper. We pipette at the bottom of the the bottle because we are expecting that the protozoans are concentrated there. And then we examine under the microscope. And then yes, we examine the motility of the protozoa. So how are they moving? What is their movement? Okay, what? Organelles, no? What uh, organs do they use for locomotion or for movement? Okay. All right. Ayan. So, uh, yes, I believe we have already, we also have a video on how to prepare the hay infusion. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I I've, I will po I have posted it in your soul section. So, you may also want to watch that. And then we will also have... We also have a video on the examination of the hay infusion. Yeah, what protozoa are are can be found there. All right, okay. Now, what can be seen? So, what are the type of protozoa that can be seen? So, here are some of the pictures. You have first the amoeba. You have the euglena, which is a flagellate, as you can see. It has a flagella, all right? You have the paramecium, which is a ciliate. You have stentor and vorticella, which are still a ciliate, as you can see, all right? Another one, you have didinium, which is, I think, a ciliate parent. Lyonotus, which is a ciliate. Uh, Colpidium ciliate, tetrahymena cilio, ciliate, and Euplotes, I think, which is a rotifer. All right, so uh, again, still, this is some of the pictures or amoeba that can be seen under hay infusion. All right, ayan, and this also. All right, and then we, we'll go now to some of the individual, lang, uh, just small, no, <laughs> protozoa. Because again, um, most of these protozoans, no, if not all, are usually non-pathogenic no they do not cause <laughs> they do not cause diseases okay to humans uh they are usually important in the environment no for um energy production and for photosynthesis for ecological sustainability and all that so it's mainly focused on the ecological um uh, importance of these protozoa that's why we're not focusing more of our attention here but so where does we come into the where do we where do we come in the picture <laughs> because we want to determine or we want to um 
identify what are the major groups of the protozoans that can cause infections. And of course, uh, these groups can can be seen in the hay infusion. All right. So again, you can you can see amoeba, right? You can see flagellates. You can also see the ciliates, and your sporozoans cannot be seen here. Okay. All right. But uh, again, these three, the first three that I mentioned, are usually the groups of protozoa, no, that can cause disease to humans. Okay. And they can also be seen in the hay infusion, okay? But generally, kani ako magipakita ninyo these protozoa that are that you can now see are usually non-pathogenic <laughs> in origin, okay? Uh, or they are they do not cause that much of disease in humans, okay? But again, uh, why are we performing this? Is because we just want to see the other members of the groups, no? Or the other types of protozoa. All right, <laughs> not only those that can affect man, but also those that can be found in the environment. All right, and again, as mentioned, most of these protozoa, their role is to really um, help in the environment, no, and to photosynthesize. And usually, usually, they are found in the environment lang, and they are not non-pathogenic. Okay, all right, again. So we're going to some of the. Um, examples or some protozoa that can be seen in the hay infusion starting first with paramecium paramecium is really popular no i don't know if you can remember but i can remember uh, personally um during high school this has been uh, introduced this organism has been already introduced to me so as mentioned it's the most commonly observed protozoans uh, it's oblong or slipper shaped and it's covered with cilia so therefore it's a type of ciliate okay it's a ciliate Ayan. and the green algae so in the environment, no, it uses the waste from paramecium as food and in turn supplies oxygen for the paramecium to use. So what type of symbiosis is that? Both of them are benefiting from one another. That is a type of commensalism, diba? So because again, both of them are benefiting from one another and no one is harming or no one is benefiting at the expense of the other. So they are at commensalism. They are at commensalism. They are at both in a commensalistic relationship, not by word. <laughs> anyway, yes, it's paramecium. And this is an example, yeah. And so that's why I recorded it this way so that you can see the GIF. So as you can see, this the ones at the side that is moving, those are its cilia. Ayan. So the cilia usually are the, again, uh, organs of locomotion. Okay, so when you say locomotion for movement, okay, so the cilia are the organs that the paramecium is using for it to move. So this is a type of, uh, this is a paramecium. So as you can see, it's a yeah, slipper <laughs> or oblong shape. Yeah, it looks like a slipper. Okay, all right. That's for paramecium. Again, the most commonly observed protozoan. Next, we go now to stentor, which is another ciliate. It's a large ciliate, uh, 500 to 2,000 microns. All right. And we have a species here, stentor uh, ceruleus. Uh, a very large trumpet, ayan, so it's trumpet shaped, blue to blue green with a macro nucleus that looks like a string of beads. So, just um, an example of stentor. And the stentor uses its cilia to sweep down, so for food, no, for eating, to sweep food down into its gullet or esophagus or its throat, diba? For, for food. All right, so it uses the cilia for food. So here's an example of a stentor. So as you can see, yes, it looks like a trumpet. So this one, guys, no, uh, the one at the top, this one, as you can see, the move, the one that's moving, that's the cilia. All right, and this is its gullet, no, or parang iahang esophagus for food. Ayan. So the cilia here uses, it is used by stentor to get food. Okay, para makap uh, so that it will enter its body down its gullet. Okay, ayan that's stentor. So it looks like a trumpet. Okay, very large ciliate, still the same as ciliate. All right, next we have euglena. Ayan. So for euglena, it's a flagellate. So it has only one flagellum. It has a reddish eye spot and numerous chloroplasts. So they have both plant and animal characteristics. So within itself, since it has a lot of chloroplasts, so it can it can or it plays a role then in photosynthesis, no? Ayan, so it also can produce oxygen. It's, it thrives best where there is an abundance of organic waste. Okay, ayan. And it's able to greatly distort their body to change direction. So it's a type of flagellate. Ayan, so this is a picture of a euglena. So this is the red, diba? 
a one a reddish eye spot and then the chloroplasts that call that is color that are color green yes and this one is of course the flagellum so as you can see only one yeah so very cute actually and so it it uses the flagellum for motion and yes that's a euglena so it's a type of flagellate and last um uh protozoa lang that i picked for us to look into that can be seen from the hay infusion is the rotifers. Rotifers are microscopic animals. Actually, they are really animals. No? So they are not like unicellular talaga. Uh, but they are microscopic. So that's why parang they are part of the protozoans. <laughs> okay, so they have 1,000 cells. They are common in fresh water and with a few in salt water. Uh, Rotifera, its name, it came from latin which means wheel bearer because again they have a corona all right diba? Dili COVID, guys <laughs> corona it's like a crown like uh, structure at the top of their head which has a lot of ciliated tuff so the gang cilia and when in motion it resembles a wheel all right so it looks like a wheel if mo move all right and uh, the closest relatives to the rotifers are the acanthocephala all right this guy's acanthocephala is actually pathogenic it's a worm no uh, you'll have that in your lecture. It's a type of, I think, nematode, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it's a nematode that has ilahang appearance ahead. They look like they have thorns. That's why they're called thorny-headed worms. Acanthocephalans, acanthocephala. They can cause disease to humans. You'll have that in your lecture. So they are of close relative with the rotifers, or diba? So mga parang batch meats. Okay. All right. Ayan. <laughs> and uh, here's a picture of the rotifer. So as you can see, here is it's yeah and uh, the ciliated tufts it's look it looks like a um wheel no wheel of fortune parang wheel in motion ganun. and that is why it's called wheel bearer all right ayan. okay now for the next slide we'll now focus on the medically important protozoa so the remaining of the lecture i will revert to my old style in lecturing which is with a projector and all that because we'll now be looking into the different types of protozoans that can cause disease okay all right so Katato mga iban mention na protozoa a while ago, guys. No, just it, it's not necessary that you know all of that because I think uh, it's more focusing now on biology. So if you're a biology, if you're a bio, biology major, ecology ba or whatever, then it's important for you to know that. But for us, parasitology are really uh, focusing lang on the medical important protozoa. So if you want to read more about the protozoans that I've mentioned there and the other ones that I have not given examples uh, to, then you can read if you want, if you're interested. Because again, they are really cute, cute case of uh, organisms. And they play a role, very important role in our environment also. Okay? All right. But for our class lang, we are now focusing on the medical important ones. Okay? All right. And again, the main purpose why we perform hay infusion is that we just want to look at the different types of protozoa. Uh, because again, there are groups there that, can cause disease to humans. And you have the amoeba, the flagellates, the ciliates, and the sporozoans, diba? All right. Okay, so I'll see you on our next video, guys. And thank you for listening. Keep, skip. <laughs> Keep safe. <laughs>